All right, so let's look at the case of a drop of water or some liquid on some surface surrounded by some gas, such as air. Um, you probably see this in different situations. Maybe you watch some cool videos about hydrophobic coatings and things like that. Um, uh, but depending on the, uh, the type of surface and the type of fluid, uh, you'll have um, various situations of, of the drop and how, how much it wets the surface. So maybe it beads up really uh, high, right? Lifts off the surface almost like water off of a duck's back or something. Um, and, and you get uh, beads like this, oh, or maybe it um, will stick to the surface uh, very low and or, or maybe in a very extreme case, it will completely spread off and, and, and just wet the surface completely. Um, so what we're going to look at is how do we figure out uh, what this angle is? So if we were to just look at the contact angle uh, between the fluid and the surface, you can see that uh, for this example, the angles way over on this side. You know, for this example, the angle's quite different. And then once we, once we, once we get uh, to this one, we're actually, if we zoom in here, we see the angle is actually way, <coughs> way over on the other side, right? Until we finally get to, to this case, which is just an extremely, extremely shallow angle, right? So there's, you can just look at the angle that the surface makes at the interface. So the, the interface between air, liquid, and solid. Uh, that the angle of that, uh, that interface uh, can tell us about the, the properties of these uh, materials. All right, so we're gonna look at this. Um, and again, uh, We'll use our uh, differential uh, amount of work uh, done on the system. Uh, and uh, we won't worry about the pressure this time. Um, but in general, uh, we'll have some surface tension. Um, let's. Uh, yeah, let's do something like, let me just write it something like this. All right, I'm going to do a sum over these various uh, pieces. All right, because there's a different surface tension if we look at the, the interface between, I'll just, I'll just, let's just call this water and glass and air, okay? If I, there's a different surface tension between the water and the glass uh, versus the water and the air or the air in the glass. There are th three different surface tensions involved. All right, so um, we're just going to add these all up. And again, in the equilibrium case, uh, this is going to be equal to zero. All right, so um, I think the first time I did this, I tried to all of this um, tried to keep the volume constant and all. Anyway, it, it doesn't work out very well. There's actually a better way to do it uh, if we look at, if we, if we only look at the, the angle here. All right, so I'm just gonna draw it like this, okay? But over here, we'll just uh, call this water. Call this glass and air. Okay. All right. So hopefully this this makes sense what we're doing here. And then this here's our our angle theta. All right. So uh, what we need to do is just find some sort of infinitesimal change that will let us compare uh, these different uh, pieces. 
meaning meaning these different uh, pieces of, of our total uh, work. All right. Um, so the way we're going to do that is imagine this water advances slightly so that it's now, it's at the same angle, right? This is still theta, um, but it has moved uh, a slight amount, which we will call dx. All right, so this dx is the, is the, the infinitesimal change in our system that we're going to use. All right. So this is all a little bit confusing so far, but uh, hopefully, hopefully it becomes clear. All right. Um, so we have uh, first. Uh, let's just start with the the easy change. We're just going to look at these different terms. All right. Maybe I should label these with an I, like this, so we can because these sigmas aren't going to be constant. All right, um, so the easy one first, all right? So if the water moves this way, then uh, the area is going to change by, just say, we, say we just have a, this has some depth to it, but we're just dividing it all out, okay? Uh, the, the area between the water and the glass will increase by dx. Right, because the water is moving onto more of the glass. All right, so how shall I write this? Let's write this on another, on another page. So what we're doing is looking at this sum. All right, so we have our uh, surface tension for water and glass. We'll just call it WG. It's going to increase the dx. Okay. The um, on the other hand, so the other one that's nice and easy is uh, the this interface between the air and the glass. All right, so the interface between the air and the glass to start off wa uh, was was this long, and then it got smaller by this much. So now there's only you know this part, which is uh, the interface between air and glass. Okay, so we have sigma, which I'll call a g, all right? And then uh, because we're getting smaller, this is a minus dx, okay, like this. All right, now looking at, you know, how much does the interface between air and water change? Um, well, if these lines are Oh, they're parallel, right? Because we're at the same angle. So if I draw an extra line right here, and, and this is at a right angle, then it, it started out as this long, and then it grew by this little piece right here. I'll just call that D sub L for now. All right, so it grew, so it's positive. So we have a sigma, and this is air and water, and it's positive, d sub l, or not sub, just dl, okay? All right, so this is our sum of our surface tensions multiplied by the, uh, the change in the area, all right? So this is equal to zero for equilibrium. So now just looking at uh, what is d, L in terms of dx. All right, well, let's just write that right here. All right, so uh, well, it's a it's a cosine. All right, so uh, dx cosine of theta, like this. All right. Okay, so um, I'm going to put this all in and divide by dx. We have this minus sign here. So now we can solve for our cosine. 
or eventually will solve for our angle. All right, so we bring these over. And there we go. So our uh, theta, all right, this angle that we're that we're looking at, I, I guess what I, I drew here was uh, drawn into the air. Here, uh, this is drawn into the water. So, so this would, so theta would actually be these other angles supplementary to the angles I drew before. All right, is equal to inverse cosine. Sigma A G minus sigma W G over sigma A W. All right. So if we want to look at the condition where it completely wets the surface, um, well, uh, that would correspond to a theta equal to zero, right? This theta would go all the way to zero, and we would have a completely flat um, situation. All right, so uh, for cosine of theta equal to zero, or theta equals zero, so cosine of theta equals one. So when this equals one, then we know we've met our, that's the critical uh, uh, values of these surface tensions to get a complete uh, a film of water on our surface. All right, so that would mean All right, and uh, and of course, um, anything uh, beyond that would also uh, would also work, right? So that corresponds to um, uh, anything uh, greater than one over here, which means uh, this is smaller than the other two. Yes. So anything like uh, like this will give us a, com a complete wetting. The, the, the water will go into a thin film on the, on the glass. Normally, though, we get some angle, um, which is given uh, by this relationship. So, and, and uh, it's actually a way you can measure uh, surface tension or uh, a level of hydrophobicity is if you measure this angle um, and you already know the surface tension of water and air and water and glass and these different things. Uh, you, can, you can solve for one of these surface tensions, for example, between your solid and water. So that gives you a metric you can use um, to determine how hydrophobic your coating is.